Hello, students. Back again here with a new concept of CMA US Part 2, Section A. And the topic that we are going to discuss today, or rather the concept that we are going to discuss today, is a very small and easy concept. And that is called as sustainable growth rate. Yes, you heard it, sustainable growth rate. Now, this particular uh, concept is there in most of the books and uh, it is uh, given along with the formula where in most of the institutes they will teach you the formula direct substitution and getting the answer but in the cma exam you find that various types of questions are asked on this and then the student wonders from where did this come it is out of syllabus, right? So there are many things which an institute does not teach us. And when we come to the exam level, we find that we are at a total you know, short of concept. So whatever is there in the syllabus, I repeat, whatever is there in the syllabus, in a professional exam, whether it is an Indian professional exam like CA or CMA, or it is a professional exam at the international level, which is CMA, CPA, CFA, ACCA, CMA. When you come to these particular professional level exams, you have to know that you are going to be tested on the concepts here. If we had to just uh, teach you the formula and they will ask you directly the formula, then what is the fun? then it is like your normal college exam. So what is different in these professional exams? I repeat once again, it is a concept. So you are tested on the concept more than whether you can you know, fill up the formulas. Filling up the formulas, yes, there will be some easy questions in the examination where if the question is asked from ratios, then you can be pretty sure that it is going to be very easy. But if it comes on some concepts, then we have to know the story behind the concept so that we can understand the questions which are asked in the exam and we can answer and attempt the questions. So as I said, sustainable growth rate is a very small concept, but very often ignored by the students and you just learn the formula simply. Even as far as the ratios are concerned, in most of the cases, it is not only sufficient to know the ratios, but also to know what will happen to a ratio if a numerator increases or decreases, if a denominator increases or decreases. So this is the way of learning a ratio, not just by hurting the formula, not just by mugging up the formula, but also understanding the concept behind it. Okay, so today we are going to study this concept of sustainable growth rate. <clears throat> so let us see. At the end of this session, we will also take up a few MCQs and see how to solve those MCQs also. Sustainable growth rate, the first thing that I would say, the concept, it indicates the maximum earnings growth growth of earnings a firm can achieve without resorting to other means of financing. Once again, it is the maximum earnings growth that a firm can achieve without resorting to other means of financing. That means that a firm is growing, a business is growing, is expanding, is earning more revenue is earning more profit, right? But it is not making use of additional capital. Now, when I say additional capital, it means that the company is not making a fresh issue of equity shares or preference shares or debentures or bonds, and neither it is taking a loan from the banks or financial institutions. So without taking in additional capital, without raising additional capital in the form of common stock or preferred stock or bonds 
or deads how can a firm grow and if it is growing then what is the maximum growth rate that the company or the firm can expect without resorting to additional capital so what is important over here is this part without resorting to other means of financing additional capital okay it can be calculated calculation formula multiplying the company's roe returns on equity by the earns earnings retention rate how much is retained out of the profits earned how much is retained so on that basis will be calculating the sustainable growth rate so i require two things here what are the two things returns on equity and earnings retention rate that is a balance of profits which are retained in the business after distributing dividends to equity shareholders after distributing dividends to equity shareholders okay coming back to the first point it indicates the maximum earnings growth which earnings net earnings net income net income for whom net income for equity shareholders common stockholders so if you are having only equity capital in the business if you are having only common stock in the business it is your net profit after tax which is called as net earnings or net income available for equity shareholders suppose you are having preference shares also you are having the preferred stock also then in that case it is your net profit after tax minus the preference dividend will give us net income or earnings available for equity shareholders common stockholders okay even when we calculate returns on equity it is the net income how do we calculate returns on equity returns on equity is calculated as net income available for equity shareholders or common stockholders divided by number of equity shares or sorry divided by common stock capital equity capital into 100 of course for percentage purpose will be fair to until the bank okay so it is net income available for common stock holders after payment of tax after payment of preferred dividend divided by common stock capital that is equity capital multiplied by 100 okay third point the sgr is an indicator many students are not aware of this point many students are not aware of this point the sgr is an indicator of what stage a company is in during its life cycle the position often determines the corporate finance objectives such as which sources of finance to use dividend payout policies and overall competitive strategy so the sgr is an indicator of what stage a company is in, what growth stage it is and what is the rate of growth if it is high if it is low and that will decide the corporate financing objectives okay that will decide the leverage of the company that will decide which source of finance to use whether you should have more of equity capital more of debt capital right dividend payout policies how much of dividend you have to pay how much you have to retain and overall competitive strategy so for this purpose the sgr is an indicator sgr is an indicator at what stage of the company it is that means at what growth stage it is and accordingly if you are requiring more capital then how to raise that additional capital if at all okay the growth ratio can also be used by creditors why to determine the likelihood of a company defaulting on its loans company is moving at a very fast pace many times we find this are wow the company is like you know really growing at a very fast rate that in a span of 2 or 3 years it has just expanded like anything growth rate is fantastic growth rate is 60% 70% hey the owner of the company is excited 
He does mass advertising. He promotes his business everywhere, on all platforms. Any social platform you open, you find that that company's ad is there. You go out on the roads, that company ad is there. The product is there that the company is selling. Company launches a new product one after the other. Product A, then within a period of three months, whether the product has taken off or not, you launch product B, then you launch product C. You say, hey, what a great company it is here. It is expanding like anything. You can see the ad of those products. You can see the, you know, the ads of the products on every platform, whether it is Facebook or you know, television or whether it is uh, holdings on the road. Everywhere, wherever you go, you find that particular company ad. Once upon a time, it was Reliance Geo. But that was when a new company, when a new product was being launched. But here, what is happening? The company is going on advertising the same product also, over and over again, so that it registers in the mind of the persons, of the public, of the customers. And you are forced to buy that product. You are induced to buy the product. Even if you don't want, it will be induced, it will be forced upon you. And that is it. That's it. That means once the product is sold, the company is not bothered about you as a customer. You are left to your own. Your product is faulty. You call the company after sales service. Company does not respond. It will pick up your call for the first time. You they find that your company you are calling for uh, you know replacement of its product or to complain about its uh, defective uh, part of the product. The company will listen. Will, they will say we'll come back to you. Our sales representative will be in touch with you. And that's it. It stops there. Next time you call, they will not entertain your call. So once the product is sold, the customer is left to his own, to his own fate. And the company is jumping in growth. Growth is growing, you know, 20%, then 40%, then 60%, 100% growth. Yay, it's great. Company is expanding. Companies advertising mass scale. Products are launched one after the other. You don't understand. The owner of the company does not understand what is happening to those products down there. Initially, they are sold, they are marketed very well. Marketed very well. But after that, the quality of the product is suffering. Owner is not bothered. Paisa agya. Money has come in. Who's bothered now? Customers have bought, gone. We we'll launch a new product. Customers are getting you know, fed up with the product. We'll launch a new product. Chalo. A new product is launched. Again, a great fanfare, ads, ads, ads. Promotions, promotions, promotions. Bombarded. Again, the same story. People say, hey, he has come out with a new product. Let's buy that product. After the product is bought, quality again falls. Because they are not really concerned with the customers. They are concerned with the growth of their company to show a high rate of growth. Such companies, we say that the faster you grow, the faster you fall. Because if you are constructing a building, if you are constructing a building, you know, if you go to Bombay, you will find uh, tall skyscrapers, 32 floors, 40 floors, 50 floors. You say, hey, what, what nonsense? 50 floors. 40 floors. Right? So, if you're building, if you're constructing a building of 40 floors, each floor when you're constructing, you have to see that your base, your foundation grows that much stronger because it has to take the load of that entire building. Correct now? Otherwise, what will happen as you are constructing each floor, the load on that foundation increases. And one fine day when you, after you construct 12 floors of that building, the entire building collapses. Why? Because your foundation is gone. Your base is gone. A very important lesson to learn for all companies which are growing very fast with a great ambition and not bothered about the foundation, about the base. So growth rate is very high. It does not indicate that company is you know, going great. Daga. You have to see what is the foundation of the company. If the foundation is strong, if the fundamentals are strong, growth rate is high, very good. 
But if the foundation is not strong, customers are complaining, customers are throwing back the products at you, customers are cursing you, and you show a growth rate of 60%, they'll say, you have looted us and earned that money. Right? So that is not the way of doing business. So high growth rate sometimes is of concern, especially to creditors, because they feel that, hey, company is growing like this, so when it falls, it will fall in the same speed, it will fall faster. So creditors look for this particular growth rate. The sustainable growth rate is the rate at which, see this now, the rate at which the sales of an entity can grow each year without the company raising any additional capital. Your sales is increasing, your revenue is increasing, your revenue is increasing. You are producing more, you are selling more. When you produce more, you will incur more cost. But you are selling also more, so that much more revenue is coming. But till the revenue comes in for manufacturing the goods, for manufacturing the goods, you require working capital. From there, that is going to come. They are saying without raising any additional capital. Without raising any additional capital. No outside cap, no fresh issue of shares, no fresh loans, no fresh borrowings. So from where the company is going to get in the funds? If the company does not raise additional capital, then the sales needs to be financed by internal sources, that is retained earnings. What is the internal source of financing? Retained earnings. That amount of profit, retained earnings means what? That amount of profit which remains after dividend has been paid to the common stockholders. Okay? After a dividend has been paid to the common stockholders. So, if you are not going to raise additional capital for the growth of your company, for the growth of your business, then from where is the capital going to come? The capital is going to come from within the business. Within the business means what? Whatever profits you have saved without paying dividend to shareholders. That particular profit which you have saved will come to your risk. Okay? Retained earnings will exist only if all the profits are not paid as dividends and a part of it is retained. We require retained earnings, no? So from where the retained earnings are going to come? The retained earnings are going to come when all the profits are not distributed as dividends. So, so if retained earnings are not there, if retained earnings are not there, then growth cannot be there. See what I'm saying? It's a very important point. Retained earnings will exist only if all the profits are not paid as dividends. Some part is retained. A part of it is retained. Okay? A part of the profit is retained in the business. Then only we will have growth. In other words, DPR should not be 100%. What is DPR? Dividend payout ratio. Your dividend payout ratio should not be 100%. Should be less than that. 100% DPR means what? Entire profits are paid as dividends to shareholders. 100% DPR means entire profits are paid as dividends to shareholders. Okay? And the last point. Why does growth in sales require funds? Obvious question. Why does growth in sales require funds? Because when I'm man if I'm selling more, what will happen? I'm going to manufacture more. If I'm going to manufacture more, I need to build up my inventory, right? I need to build up my inventory. I need to incur more production cost. Uh, high, my production cost is going to increase. In order to meet the demand, I may have to ask my laborers, my workers to work overnight, second shift, overtime. So labor cost will increase, overtime cost will increase. Sometimes 
my overhead cost may increase then when i sell my goods to customers i give them credit period so again funds are blocked so i need working capital to support my increase in sales to support my growth in sales in the form of additional inventory additional expenses production cost or production expenses increase in accounts receivable my debtors amount will increase balance will increase so for all this purpose i require working capital i require additional working capital and this additional working capital is going to come from retained earnings so if i don't have retained earnings once again i'm repeating the point if i don't have retained earnings i can never expect a growth i can never expect a growth okay so that point is important so now we conclude with the most important thing growth is not possible growth is not possible without retained earnings if there are no retained earnings there is no growth if there is retained earnings there is growth okay now i want to give you the formula first and second i want to prove this point to you that only if retained earnings are there then growth is there if retained earnings are not there then growth is not there so i will be proving this to you before we come to actual solving of problems okay so as i said these lectures of mine are conceptual lectures are not superficial lectures where i just read out the formula and say okay okay this is done this portion is done so i will be taking up the concept to explain in detail the story behind it and we will take up some uh, you know figures also wherever possible we take up some figures numerical values and try to see whether what we are saying makes sense or whether it is nonsense right so once you get an idea into the concept you you know have a grip over the concept you will be able to understand better let's see. formula formula for calculating sgr now the formula says sgr that is sustainable growth rate is equal to roe returns on equity multiplied by 1 minus dpr 1 minus the dividend payout ratio so if your dividend payout ratio is uh, 30% this 1 minus 0.3 1 minus 0.3 is 0.7 so if your dividend payout ratio is 30% your retention ratio 1 minus dpr is retention ratio 1 minus dpr is retention ratio or balance ratio that balance ratio will be 100 minus 30 percent so if it is your dpr is 30 percent 100 minus 30 70 percent if your dpr is 60 percent 100 minus 60 retention ratio is 40 percent like that okay now let us prove let us prove i want to prove to you that if there is retained earnings then only growth is there so we'll take a small example okay year one company starts with an equity of 500000 dollars year one company starts business with an equity of 500000 dollars at the end of the year it earns a net income of 100000 dollars net income available for common stockholders net income available for equity shareholders out of that it pays a dividend say of 30000 so the balance amount that is retained is 70000 so retained earnings are 70000 you have paid 30000 as dividend so retained earnings is 70000 30000 upon 1 lakh will give you dpr dpr is 30 percent so retained earnings is 70 percent 70 000 upon 100 000 30 000 upon 100 000 30 percent is dpr so this is your dpr dpr is 30 percent 
So retention is 70%. Now, returns on capital employed, returns on equity. What is a returns on equity? Returns on equity is net income divided by equity. Net income divided by equity. 1 lakh divided by 5 lakhs. 100,000 divided by 500,000. So that returns on equity comes to 20%. That means whatever amount you invest in the business, whatever amount you invest in the business, you are going to get 20% returns on that. That is the meaning of it. Returns on equity, whatever amount is invested in the form of equity, of that 20% you will get. So if you have invested 500,000, you will get back 100,000, 20%. If you have invested 400,000, then you'll get 20% of 400,000, that is 80,000 as net income. If you have invested, let us say, 1 million, 1 million, in that case, if you are getting a net income of 100,000, that is 10% returns on equity. Okay? So, returns on equity, net income divided by equity invested. B, B is equal to balance. B is equal to balance. Retention. Retention ratio, how do you calculate? 70,000 divided by 100,000. How much is the net income? 100,000. Out of that, how much is remaining? How much is balance? 70,000. Once again, how much is earned by the company for shareholders? 100,000. Out of that, how much is remaining now? 70,000. So how much is balance now? 70,000. So what is the balance ratio? 70,000 upon 100,000. 70%. B into R is the formula that I'm going to take. Or B into ROE. So when I use that formula, I'll get B into ROE. That is equal to 70 into 20%. That is equal to 14%. So now growth rate is 14%. In the first year. Okay. Now, for it to have a growth rate of 14% in the second year, this retained earnings of 70,000 must be reinvested in the business. So, in year two, I will have my equity $500,000 plus I will have retained earnings $70,000. So, whatever amount is retained over here in the business in the first year, your amount of retained earnings in the first year. This is coming back and reinvested in the second year. So what is my total amount of equity invested in the second year? My total amount of equity invested in the second year is 5,70,000. 5,70,000. 570,000 dollars. Now, what is my returns on equity? What is my returns on equity? I normally earn how much returns on equity? I normally earn 20% returns on equity. So this is my base, 20%. 20% 20 of 570,000 dollars, 20% of 570,000 dollars. That comes to 114,000 dollars. 20% of 570,000 dollars comes to 114,000 dollars. That is my net income. Okay, now. Increase in net income. How much has the net income increased by? In the first year, you can see I will make use of a different color here. In the first year, your net income was 100,000. Now it has increased to how much? 114,000. So how much is the increase by? 114 minus 100. That is by 14,000. So it has increased by 14,000. So what is the increase rate? What is the increase rate? Increase rate is this 14,000 divided by the initial capital, the initial amount of net income that you had earned. Okay. So that will give you an SGR of 14%. So whatever was your SGR here, the same SGR has come here also. That is because you have reinvested this retained earnings. The 70,000 has been reinvested here. Correct? Have you understood now? Fine. So I have proved to you 
what did i prove to you i proved to you this part growth is not possible without retained earnings if there are no retained earnings there is no growth why because if there are no retained earnings balance is zero if balance is zero then this in this particular formula b into r o e b will become zero zero into anything will be zero zero into anything will be zero isn't it so I'll prove to you either way fine so after you go through this session now you can ask anybody what is sustainable growth rate they will say we don't know at the most they will give you formula tell them i will tell you what is sustainable growth rate and explain to them explain to them show off that you are having more knowledge you should have more knowledge because you are going to become a professional cma is a professional qualification cpa is a professional qualification so as a professional person you are supposed to have more knowledge than the average normal person right okay so this is what i do normally for my students for my students you are all my students so those who are going for the cma exam who are going to write their exams in may or june or in the next window maybe or whichever window you are planning for when you are going for exam you should be well armed with knowledge okay so now let us take examples of uh, how to arrive at how to calculate sgr under different circumstances as we normally do different types of questions you must have done one question from the institute point of view whichever institute you have joined or sometimes they don't do the question also they just tell you the formula and they say okay now you can manage you are grown ups okay yeah so let us see seven hills corporation had 2 million dollars of equity as on jan 1st 2021 and a net income before tax before tax it should ring bells uh, ring bells in your mind before tax of 400000 dollars for the year ended 31st december 2021 rate of tax applicable is 30% for the year company's dpr is normally 60% dividend payout ratio is 60% that means 60% of the profits are paid so 40% of the profits are retained retention ratio is 40% still we'll calculate calculate the sgr of the company net income before tax Four hundred thousand dollars. I always go as per the format of my revenue statement. Net income before tax four hundred thousand dollars. First, what do I do? Minus tax. So minus thirty percent tax. Thirty percent of four hundred comes to hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Net income available for common stockholders is two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Why? Because preferred stock is not. So whatever is a profit after tax is fully available for common stockholders. Out of this two hundred and eighty thousand, how much am I declaring as dividend? Sixty percent is declared as dividend. So sixty percent of two hundred and eighty thousand is one hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars. <coughs> okay, so one hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars is the dividend paid. How much is balance? One hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Retained earnings, balance B B for balance, retained earnings. What is the balance called as retained earnings? So balance is one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Now, returns on equity. How much is available for equity shareholders? How much is available for equity shareholders? Two hundred and eighty thousand. What is the total capital invested? Two million. Two hundred and eighty thousand dollars divided by two million into hundred. that will give us a returns on equity of 14% returns on equity of 14% okay balance i said the balance 
112,000 out of 280,000 is balance. That comes to 40 percent. Even if you don't calculate this, you are getting it from here. This is 60 percent. This is 100 percent. So this has to be 40 percent. 160, 100 minus 60 is 40. Correct. Therefore, SGR is equal to B into balance retention ratio into returns on equity that is equal to 40 into 14 percent that comes to 5.6 percent 5.6 percent clear simple question only equity is there now Seven Hills Corporation had $2 million of equity and 5% preferred stock of $1 million as on Jan 1st, 2021. And a net income again before tax of $900,000 for the year ended December 31st, 2021. Rate of tax applicable 30%. Company's DPR is normally 40%. Now calculate the SGR. Same method, net income before tax, $900,000, minus 30% tax, $270,000, net profit after tax, net income, $630,000, but this net income is for all stakeholders, that is for common stock plus preferred stock. Common stock plus preferred stock. So what will I do first? I will pay preference dividend. What is preference dividend rate? Five percent. What is the amount of preference capital? One million. Okay. Five percent of one million. How much will that be? Ten percent is. You don't have to take a calculator for that. 10% of 1 million is 1 lakh. 5% of 1 million is 50,000. So preferred dividend is 50,000. 630 minus 50,000. Net income for common stockholders, 580,000. 580,000, out of which 40% is declared as dividend. So 40% of 580,000 is coming to 232,000. 580 minus 232, retained earnings, balance profits, 342, 3,48,000 or $348,000. Okay. Now, returns on equity, how much is earned for common stockholders? 580. How much is a common stock? 2 million. So that comes to 29%. Okay, that comes to 29%. How much is B? I can tell you already. If this is 40%, so this is 40%. So this has to be 60%, 100 minus 40. But still, I will show the calculation. B is equal to 348 out of 580. So that comes to 60%. Okay, now calculate SGR. B into E, 60 into 29%. Okay, 16 to 29% that comes to 17.4%. 17.4%. Clear. <coughs> now we'll take up. Three MCQs. Three MCQs. First MCQ. Seven Hills Corporation had two million dollars of common stock of par value hundred dollars each as on Jan first. 2021 and a net income 
of eight hundred thousand dollars for the year ended December thirty first, twenty twenty one. The company pays dividend each year at the rate of ten dollars per share of common stock. So DPR is not given. They have given instead dividend each year ten dollars per share of common stock. Now common stock total is two million dollars. Each share of the common stock is worth hundred dollars. Okay, so how many shares we are having? Twenty thousand shares of common stock. Correct. Twenty thousand shares of common stock. Now we are supposed to find out what is the correct answer. SGR, whether it is twenty-five percent, thirty percent, ten percent, forty percent. We'll go by the normal method. Net income is start. <coughs> Net income for common stockholders is eight million dollars, eight lakh dollars. Sorry, eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand dollars. So I start with calculation. Net income for common stockholders eight hundred thousand dollars minus dividend payable at the rate of ten dollars per share into twenty thousand shares. Ten dollars per share into twenty thousand shares. That will come to Two hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand minus two hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand minus two hundred thousand is six hundred thousand. Okay, that is your retained earnings. That is your B value. Retained earnings of B value. Now, returns on equity, eight hundred thousand dollars upon total equity capital of two million dollars. So, eight hundred thousand dollars. Divided by two million dollars equals to forty percent. Equals to forty percent. What is B? Out of eight lakhs, we have retained six hundred lakhs, six hundred thousand. So six hundred thousand divided by eight hundred thousand that comes to seventy-five percent. Okay, six hundred thousand is balance out of eight hundred thousand. So it is seventy-five percent. Multiply. SGR is equal to B into ROE. That is equal to 75 into 40 percent. It comes to 30 percent. Okay, it comes to 30 percent. So 30 percent is the correct option. So it is option B. 30 percent. Okay. So here the DPR was not given, not required. DPR is not required. You just have to know how much you are paying, how much is balance. DPR is not of concern. Balance is of concern. So we have to calculate the balance ratio, retention ratio. Okay, let us take the second MCQ. Wow, it's a big one. Interesting. Looks interesting. So let's see. Axel Corporation had sales. Oh, sales is given. Normally they give us equity capital. <coughs> Axel uh, Corporation had sales of one million dollars. Of one million dollars. Okay, and then they are given the sales are likely to grow twenty percent every year to support growth in sales. To support growth in sales, the company will require additional inventory of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Incur additional labor cost of twenty thousand dollars. And increase in accounts receivable to the extent of thirty thousand dollars. Okay, to the extent of thirty thousand dollars. Now, 
company decides to declare the residual profits as dividends to common stockholders after meeting all the above requirements and an additional amount of $50,000. The net income for common stockholders is $400,000. And I will include a small point here. Common equity. They have not given. Common equity is $1 million. Okay, this is additional. I'm giving it to you, it is missing. Common equity is $1 million. SGR of the company is, now, dividend payout ratio is not given. Amount of dividend is not given. What they have said about dividend, company decides to declare the residual profits as dividends to common stockholders. Residual profits, balance profits are paid as dividends. So here the dividend is a balancing figure. Dividend is a balance. After setting aside, see this part, after setting aside, after meeting all the above requirements, and an additional amount of $50,000. After meeting all the above requirements, which requirements? That if the company is likely to grow at 20%, we will have additional inventory. This is first, first requirement. Additional inventory of $150,000. Additional labor cost of $20,000, second requirement and increase in accounts receivable third one increase in accounts receivable of thirty thousand dollars third factor plus i require another fifty thousand dollars maybe in cash so four requirements are there so how much i have to keep aside now how much i have to keep aside 150 plus 20 170, 170 plus 30, 200,000, 200,000 plus 50,000, 250,000 dollars. I have to set aside. 250,000 dollars. I have to set aside. Means what? 250,000 dollars is to be set aside. It means that 250,000 dollars should be my retained earnings. Should be my Retained earnings. Now let us come back to the theory that I've done with you. Let us come back to the theory that I've done with you. I don't do anything without reason. What did I say? Why does growth in sales require funds? See this paragraph. I've done this with you when I was explaining. Growth requires additional funds because there is an increased need of inventory. There is an increased payout for labor, maybe, or there is an increased accounts receivable. All the all three of them are there. So I will be having additional investment in inventory. I will be having additional production costs in the form of labor costs. I'm having increased accounts receivable. So funds are blocked. So I require additional working capital. So for that working capital. I have to set my funds aside. See here, growth of sales, growth of sales, all these things are important. Growth of sales needs to be financed by internal sources. So all these things are needed to be financed by retained earnings. So that is where concept plays a very important role. If you don't have the idea, then what is the use of learning the formula? There is no use of mugging up the formula, learning the formula. You will say, sir, it has come out of syllabus. Are boss, it is in the syllabus only. It is within the syllabus only. Your concept has not been taught to you. Not examiner's fault. Not examiner's fault. Not IMA fault. Whose fault? Correct, no? So that means concept has to be taught to you. Otherwise, you will not be learning the concept and you will go for the exam. 
without knowing the concept, without the knowledge. I want you to get maximum possible marks. I want to give, you know, ensure that you get maximum possible marks. And that can happen only when you are fully armed with knowledge. Okay? So, what is given to you? All these four points. One, two, three, four. All these four points. 150,000 plus 20,000 for labor cost plus accounts receivable 30,000 plus additional amount of 50,000 that you have to keep aside. So, retained earnings required for all this purpose to be financed is $250,000. $250,000. That is retained earnings. The remaining amount, residual profits, you are declaring as dividends. Right? So, how do the working go? Net income for common stockholders, $400,000. That is given to us in the problem. Net income. $400,000. Minus the dividend, which is the residual balance, balancing figure, I don't know. Retained earnings, I know that I have to retain $250,000 for my working capital requirements. So how much is the difference between these two figures? The difference between these two figures is paid as dividend. So that comes to $150,000. Now, out of these retained earnings, I have to pay dividend. Oh, sorry. Out of this net income, I have to pay dividend. I have paid 150,000 dividend, and this is my retained earnings. So now, let us calculate returns on equity. Returns on equity, $400,000 net income earned divided by common stock, which I have made you uh, additional information there. 100,000, uh, sorry, $1 million of common stock. So that comes to 40 percent. Balance 250 out of 400 is retained. So 62.5 percent. SGR B into ROE 62.5 into 40 percent. That comes to 25 percent. So your correct option is 25 percent. Correct option is 25 percent. Option C. Clear? So, this is how we do the MCQs. This has to be done fast. Let us take the last uh, MCQ. Gray Hill Corporation had $1 million of common stock at par value $100 each as on Jan 1st, 2021, and a net income of $800,000 for the year ended December 31st, 2021. Read the next line. It says, the company pays entire profits as dividend each year on common stock. Entire profits are paid as dividend. What are the options? SGR, 15%, 0%, 8.33, 12.55. .5. You don't require to work out. Entire profits are paid as dividends. So what did I tell you? If no profits are retained, if no profits are retained, if there are no retained earnings, there is no growth. And if there is no growth, then growth rate is zero. Option B. If entire profits are paid as dividends, entire profits are paid as dividends, then what will happen? Net income, net income is $800,000. Entire $800,000 you are paying as dividend. Okay? Entire $800,000 you are paying as dividend. So what will happen? Retain the earnings are nil. So when you calculate B into R, your B is zero, balance is zero. Okay? 
zero into anything will give you zero. So growth rate is zero, right? So that is your sustainable growth rate. You must have never imagined also that we can have so much of uh, you know concept and so much of MCQs which are of different varieties. You must have thought that only formula will come and formula you have to substitute. My second MCQ which is done. Where is the formula going to be of any use to you? Sorry, second MCQ. Where is the formula going to be of any use to you? When you are given so much of data, you will be, you know, frightened as to worry what is happening. So there are conceptual MCQs in your CMA exam. So until and unless you are thorough with the concepts, you will not be able to go to the essay section of your exam. Remember that 100 MCQs are asked, which you have to solve in three hours. If at least 50% or more is not correct, your examination gets terminated there and you will not be having the essay section at all. So don't think that if I get less over here, I will make up in the essay. If you get less than 50% over here scoring, then you are not going to go to the essay section. And if you are not going to the essay section, that means you have not cleared the exam. Immediate instant justice will be delivered that you have to come another time. Visit, do visit us again. It means that. Okay. I don't want you to visit again and again. I want you to visit only once for part one and once for part two. Okay. So this is where we stop with the MCQs and with this new concept. Today we have learned sustainable growth rate. So as I told you, we will I will keep on posting new videos, new concepts from your syllabus. This is again, as I repeat, it is part two, section A. Part two, section A. Okay. So have a nice day. Bye. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.